This channel contains mature subject matter, so if you're not 19 years or older, don't watch this channel. With that being said, let's get into it. Hey everyone, this video is just a bit of a garden update and a few organic gardening tips and a few things that I'm going to do to start uh, get ready for the transition to flowering and to fall weather. I removed this branch from the hash plant. This one branch was the only one on all four plants that was showing signs of some sort of fungus, I think, attacking the leaves. It was directly in front of one of the oscillating fans and it was hanging down. Something that can happen is uh, high amounts of airflow can spread fungal spores and you, you will find that areas with constant high airflow, uh, you might have a, a worse spread of fungus than other areas. And some of the curled leaf tips on this one branch are probably from uh, too much wind. So this year there's a type of spider and it almost looks like maybe there's a caterpillar nest in there, but it's not. It's a spider. I started noticing these spiders and there was damage around the leaves. So I kind of thought the spiders were causing the damage to the plant. And then I realized that they were eating something that was causing the damage. And these are actually beneficial. So these are on every single plant in my garden, the cannabis, the apples, the strawberries, and I think they're part of the reason I don't have aphids. Generally, if I see large spiders on my plants, I go ahead and I just leave them. They usually are beneficial. The time on there is not correct. This is actually the morning and the humidity is well into the 90s and the temperature is just right. So there's a lot of condensation forming on the inside of the tent. From my experience, any parts of the plants that are touching the condensation on the plastic are gonna be the first areas where powdery mildew show up. I literally looked around and just grabbed whatever I had. I used bamboo and I attached it to the cages with uh, zap straps. And I put drinking bottles over top of the bamboo to keep them from puncturing through the plastic. Um, yeah, simple, cheap, and uh, I consider effective. I set up another fan by one of the entrances to the grow tent. The reason I did this is because all of the plants in here are breathing a lot of CO2 and they're exhaling a lot of oxygen. And by having a fan pushing fresh air in all the time, I'm going to ensure that the plants have a good supply of CO2. I knew that the two row malted barley had tons of beneficial fungus, but this is insane. I mean, every individual grain is starting to burst with fungal growth. I'll be harvesting worm juice from the worm bin and giving it to my cannabis any chance that I have. I came out to my garden yesterday and I noticed there was a whole bunch of little holes dug all over the soil of my cannabis. What I think it is, is I think that a rodent has discovered the barley in my soil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just spray some peppermint soap around everywhere, 
rodents, or at least mice, definitely don't like peppermint, and uh, I'm gonna set some rat traps. I find that where I live, certain spider mites like to start around the base of my cannabis plant, uh, right around this time of year. So I go through there and I suck them off, suck off all the webs, and uh, even if they are spiders, they're really small spiders and I can't even really see that they're there. I also suck up some of the fungal gnats if I can get them. Here you can see the cannabis roots growing through the fabric pot. About two or three weeks into flowering, most strains of cannabis will drastically decrease the amount of root production and they'll switch all their energy into producing buds. And I think this one plant is doing one last hard push on root production before it has to go into full on budding. I'm gonna spray the bottoms of the cannabis plants with peppermint cast style soap and silica. And I'm really hoping that the peppermint oils in the soap are gonna help deter any kind of rodents. I decided to spray the top of the soil, the pots and the deck around the pots. And I'm kind of hoping that it's going to mask the smell of the barley. And I'm hoping the peppermint oil will help to deter rodents. Animals that come into the garden can carry mites on their fur. So I try to keep all animals out of my garden. Hey everyone. So it is August 24th today. I finished up pretty much everything I need to do to get the uh, greenhouse ready for fall. Uh, yeah, so everything's clean. The floor is clean. Everything is swept. Uh, there's no debris. There's no no place for, for bugs or pests or mold or anything to start growing. So it looks like the rat dug up the pots again last night. And it looks like it's the last time it's ever gonna dig in my pots again. I'll keep these rat traps going in case any other rats find their way in here. Yeah, I was kind of laughing at myself there the other day. I sprayed the peppermint all over the place. And I know the peppermint works really well for mice. I've never used it for rats. And then I went and put out sunflower butter for the rats to eat. And sunflower butter is pretty stinky stuff. It has quite an aroma to it. Anyways, I got the rat. And I'm going to keep up with the uh, peppermint cast aisle soap. Uh, it's going to help keep pests off the lower canopy, off the stalks. Probably another week or so and I'll stop, stop spraying these plants all together. And really the last thing I'm gonna do for, uh, for fall preparation is I'm gonna start doing some preemptive sulfur burning means I'm gonna just burn a candle every now and then and that's just gonna help the powdery mildew from uh, from starting to grow it's just gonna keep everything in check If you're in Chilliwack or you know you're going to be passing through Chilliwack, check out Fraser Valley Greenhouse Supply. This is where I go to get all my dry amendments, my seaweed, everything that I use to grow, these guys supply me. All I do is I give them a call and they'll order in whatever I need and whatever quantity that I need. It's a one-stop shop for whatever growing method you choose. They'll help you out with hydroponics, with deep water culture, living organic, cocoa. They have it all and they have everything you need to get set up.
The gentlemen at this store are willing to negotiate prices and they're also willing to price match. They also have a selection of different used equipment, which is really nice when you're trying to save a buck. So the next time you guys need something, give these guys a call.